Okay, so let's talk about different strategies to develop paragraphs. All right, so I pulled these from textbook. These aren't like word for word explanations, but this is the Everyday Writer. This is the seventh edition. The eighth edition just came out. By the time you watch this, who knows? Maybe there's a ninth edition. But um, these are just basic strategies you can use. There's not a correct answer. These are just different things that can all get the job done. So we talked a little bit about purpose earlier. Depending on where your paragraph shows up in your essay, you may have a different purpose. I'm introducing a concept. I'm developing an idea. I'm concluding the paper. Beyond that, you might have other strategies. And like, well, these on the list. You can tell a story. You, you can use a narrative strategy. Be like, hey, I want to start with a story. Maybe this is how you want to get the reader's attention. Or you, you need to explain a concept. You could tell a story. Uh, sometimes you just need to describe something. You know, um, uh, it, it could be a description in an essay. It could be just explaining a concept, whatever. You're going to describe something. Uh, sometimes we need to define something. So you can give a definition. This is a really common hook idea. Or stop, okay, I just used this big word. Let's explain what it means. That could be a strategy for a paragraph. You could give an example. Examples are incredibly important. It helps uh, readers to take new concepts and ground it with something they already know. Examples are important. Division and classification. You can take uh, a concept and kind of break it up into different categories or classifications. So something could be kind of big and you're like, okay, there's this part of the thing, but this part, this part, this part. And seeing how things are broken down can also maybe help the reader to understand what you're talking about. In addition to that, maybe you want to give an analogy. Analogies are great. They're kind of like mixing stories with examples. Um, but they're going to take something that the reader knows, again, something familiar, and you're going to explain it um, in that new context of the unfamiliar thing so that they can ground it. This really ties into how learning works. Whenever you learn a new concept, you have to tie it into something you already know, or else it's just uh, it's hard to ground it. So analogies, great ideas. Cause and effect. Um, if you want to explain that, well, if this happens, then this happens. Um, cause and effect. You could be talking about something that's happened in the past. This happened, and as a result, this happened. Could be very persuasive. Or, you know, hypothetically in the future. If this happens, then this will probably happen. What you want to avoid, though, is logical fallacies. We'll talk about that in a future video. Logical fallacies are mistakes in logic. So when you're doing cause and effect, as with any way that you're presenting information, you don't want to stretch the idea too far or manipulate it in a way that it's not actually logical anymore. You want to avoid that. Process. I'd say you just want to explain how to do something. You're going to do this step, then this step, then this step. Process. Great way to uh, introduce information in a paragraph. Problem and solution. This is kind of like cause and effect, but with cause and effect, you're like, if this happens and this happens, no. Problem is, this is the problem. Problem exists. You know, it could be hypothetical, but here's a problem that exists. You help the reader to understand it so that you can then present the solution. You don't just explain the problem, because that's, I don't know, description or something like that, but problem and solution is you set up the problem so that you can give the solution. This might work really well with an introduction. Okay, and then reiteration. So this is, this is an interesting thing. Reiteration, you want to bring back important ideas. This could be a phrase. This could be um, kind of a, a chorus, you know, an idea that you repeat throughout the paper. It could be a thesis statement. Um, you want to repeat the important ideas, but you don't always necessarily use the same words because then that feels redundant, like you're just repeating yourself. Reiteration and repeating, they have a similar purpose, but sometimes when we are just really worked up and we're not as polished, we repeat ourselves instead of introducing new information as we uh, restate an idea. Okay, so this was all talking about different strategies you can use. Now let's talk about some of the craft of writing a paragraph. 
We talked about purpose. We talked about strategies. Let's talk about craft. Okay, what makes for a good paragraph? I don't know, but these might be some characteristics. Sentence fluency. This just shows mastery of you as a writer. You don't want to always use the same kind of sentence. Um, earlier in this class, we talked about the four different types of sentences, simple, compound, complex, compound, complex. The more complicated a sentence gets, the more the, the longer it tends to be because you've got more parts put together. Simple may be shorter, though not always. You want to mix it up, not just to show, hey, look what I'm able to do. I'm able to use different types of sentences because no one really cares about that. But it's, it's affecting the rhythm and the flow of your argument, right? If you've got this explanation and this explanation, and then you stop and say something short, ooh, that short thing really stands out. Does that make sense? It's, it's like, uh, I don't know, baseball? Um, it's mixing up your pitches. Uh, you can kind of lead someone to a certain point uh, by developing patterns, and then you mix it up, and then, ooh, the thing that you mixed up really stands out as, oh, that was important. So if you have a long sentence, long sentence, long sentence, short sentence, boom, that short sentence pops. So you want to have a variety of sentence types and sentence lengths. Okay, we just talked about reiteration. With repetition, there is a good reason to repeat things sometimes. It helps to be clear. You want to repeat your points. Your, your, your thesis statement should be set up clearly in the beginning of your paper. It should be developed throughout the middle of the paper. It should be restated at the end of the paper. That's good repetition. But just repeating yourself without adding something new or developing it in some way with like a new example or in summary, that just kind of gets boring and it feels like you're rambling, probably like my lesson right now. And that, well, you, you want to avoid that. Parallelism. I wasn't familiar with the concept of parallelism until I started teaching and I was doing the writing lab and there were tests and quizzes on parallelism. And students would come to me and they're like, what is this? And I didn't know. Parallelism is great. It's really important. It is the difference between amateur and polished writing. It's you are now thinking not just about the flow of a sentence, but the structure of, of a sentence and even maybe multiple sentences. Um, because you're recognizing different patterns in the grammar and you are repeating those patterns. It helps to create sort of symmetry and flow and consistency in the writing. That is beautiful, right? So what do I mean? What I mean is if you're making a list, for example, and the, you have a couple words, uh, like certain phrases at each stage of the list, you know, a couple words, comma, a couple words, comma, and a couple words, right? To, to do that, say with a prepositional phrase or something like that, you wanna make sure you're using the exact same grammatical structure. So if it's preposition, article, noun, preposition, article, noun, preposition, article, noun, you're repeating the same grammatical structure. And that's when understanding like parts of speech, which we talked about earlier in the course, can come back. Because now you're intentionally using different parts of speech to create a pattern to make a uh, good structure in, in your writing. Transitions. Um, okay, so when you're a younger writer, a new, fresher writer, you learn lots of transitions, lots of scaffolding and helps that teachers give you. They tell you words like first, second, third, and finally, or next, and whatever. These transition words, maybe even phrases, <sighs> I mean, pick up a more polished book, you're probably not going to see them as often. They're good to help you to learn how to do that, but the writer in those cases may need it more than the reader does. That might be a bit controversial. So I don't teach transitions a lot. 
what I find is if your ideas are logical and you found a logical order to present those ideas in and you're moving from paragraph to paragraph to paragraph as you transition between different ideas and there's a logical connection between all of them that is the transition we don't necessarily I remember when I was younger they would talk about okay you kind of want to introduce an idea at the end of a paragraph and then you want to continue it at the start of the next paragraph and now you're spending like 25% of your paragraph on transition no that's a waste and it's not necessarily good repetition it's very clear but it's holding the reader's hand right the reader doesn't necessarily need you to hold their hand to get you through the essay you just want to be clear and efficient and they're gonna follow you it's gonna work out okay um, I like to use this example of like a music video okay so music video have you ever watched a music video I assume you have um, there are some characteristics you know you've got the person they're in the middle they're going back and forth and they're singing and then suddenly they're now in a new location with new people behind them but they're still singing maybe they're wearing different clothes but they're still singing it's the same song but they're like yeah 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 and then suddenly boom cut and now I'm in a new location and different things are happening do they ever worry that the readers just that the viewers just gonna be like what just happened I don't know what's going on he was here and then he was here and then he was here I'm just so lost no no one worries about that because there's a consistent thread through it all it's the same singer I mean you sometimes that could be mixed up but it's the same song it's the same music it's the same rhythm, it's the same lyrics, it's the same video. And so people get, okay, we're continuing. This is trusting the viewer or the reader that they can follow what you're doing. You can change a lot of visual aesthetics things. It could be a new paragraph. It can be new words in the paragraph. It could be a new example, like cutting between different parts of a music video but it's the same argument. Everything connects logically and your reader can follow it. This connection of different ideas next to each other, we call it juxtaposition in filmmaking. It applies to, to writing as well. It's, it's that transition of what you put next to it. Your reader will naturally try to make logical connections between things. So if you're not careful, they will connect dots that don't exist right they will make conclusions you don't want them to so you do want to be clear but if I'm using example one and I'm uh, moving to example two do I need to say and now for my second point I'm going to say nah it's probably not necessary make a claim then move on they get that it's a new claim because your reader we gotta give them enough credit they're smarter than we we probably treat them. We as the writer might need that help, but I'm gonna challenge you, focus on good logical connections and don't lean so heavy on some of these transitional phrases. Now, does that mean don't use any transitions? No, no, no. Transitions are fine, they're okay. But if it's slowing down your paper, get rid of them. Just make sure your logic connects everything and you'll be fine. Okay, let's talk a little bit about structure for different kinds of uh, sentences and by extension paragraphs, right? Okay, um, from the teacher side of things, we, we might call these stems. Uh, you could think of it as a template or a formula for writing uh, a sentence. Okay, so here we go. There's not a lot of words missing in this example. <laughs> That's on purpose. In, comma, by, sorry in blank by blank comma blank period <laughs> not a whole lot going there but this this is how we introduce a text for example so this could be the first sentence of a of a paragraph this could be a thesis within a paragraph in title of a work by so and so then maybe you make a statement this could be a claim or a thesis or it could just be a summary of a text so the first time you introduce something, this is a stem or a part of a thing that you can use to just introduce that structure. What's it look like in reality? 
Well, here's an example. I wish I highlighted in a different color. Okay, in, and this is a, a sample essay from 88 Open Essays. It's an OER text that I use in my class. Um, so this is in about halfway through the, the text. There's an essay called Guardians of the Galaxy and the Fall of the Classic Hero by A. David Lewis. So how would we introduce it? In, title, by, author. Just like the formula did. But this is what it looks like in practicality. Comma, then we can make some sort of statement or claim. This is uh, a summary, for example. The author discusses how Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy circles around Joseph Campbell's monomyth without ever fully committing to it. So that is an argument made by the author. That's not my claim. That's a summary of the paper. So in one sentence, we're able to use just basic structure and introduce a text. This could be the first sentence of a paragraph. This could just be the the first sentence where we introduce a new source. So if you're not sure how to start a paragraph and you know maybe you've looked at some of these strategies and you're not sure what to do but you know you need to introduce a text and you know I keep scrolling and you know oh well I need to introduce something then maybe you can look at the structure of something like a stem for a paragraph and it's like okay I can go in title, by, author, comma, then just summarize. And all in one sentence, we're able to get that done. So we covered a lot. Was that helpful? <laughs> yeah, I hope that was helpful.